winter's coming. Cobra better move fast! A Yagi blast will blow him away! Nobody beats G.I. Joe, G.I. Joe Arctic Blast! Look out, Cobra! Those big studded tires will roll over anything! Hey hey! Welcome to Half the Battle! And welcome back to Winter is Coming, where we take a look at cold weather specialists! To start things off, meet Windchill. His first figure was released in 1989 with all original body parts. And I gotta say, this guy looks like a proper polar explorer. I don't know what it is about this look, but I really get a Scott of the Antarctic vibe here. I think it's the mustache that makes it. There's some nice extra touches, like the molded crease in his pants, and they bother to paint his goggles. The only bad thing I can think of is that his lower arms and elbows are made from that white plastic that is prone to yellowing over time, meaning it loses that crisp look. I'm also not entirely sure about the molded gun on his belt. You really don't want a barrel of a gun pointed at your junk. Especially since this guy is a vehicle driver, so he's bound to get jolted when driving over uneven terrain. His only accessories were a rifle and a pair of skis. That may not seem like much, but remember he was a vehicle driver, so it was nice of Hasbro to include more than just a gun, and the skis are very appropriate. His vehicle, the Arctic Blast, I'm less enamored with. I mean, check out this thing. It looks like a dog sled by way of Mad Max. It's also made of that white plastic that discolors so easily, which is a shame and I can't believe I've talked this long about the bloody thing without mentioning the freaking tires. This is the monster truck of snow vehicles. It looks like it was built for speed, doesn't it? Which is kind of a problem. Because it has an open cockpit, meaning the driver has no protection from the elements. So, Windchill is getting wind, snow and ice right in his face all the live long day. And there's the G.I. Joe staple of having an unprotected driver's seat for the enemy to shoot at. To say nothing of the poor bastards in the gunner's positions who aren't gonna have a ball either. I mean, all the stuff that the tires kick up, that's going right in their face. So yeah, not the most practical of vehicles. Windchill got one more toy in the original line. This second version, released in 1994, is a straight repaint of the original. And it's an inferior repaint. They didn't bother to color his goggles this time, which detracts somewhat from the look. And even though he has just as much detailing on his chest painted on, it looks like he has far less, because they used a slightly darker green for the little bits and bobs, meaning they don't stand out. A bit of a waste, really. Oh, and while this guy still came with a rifle, they took away his skis. That's just cheap. It's not really a bad figure, unless you compare it to the original. This one also came with a vehicle, the Blockbuster, but since I don't have it, I can't really comment. It also looks weird, just in a very different way than the Arctic Blast. With the toys out of the way, let's take a look at the character. Straight off the bat, I couldn't find him in the cartoons or in the comic, so there's nothing to say there. Though he did get a few seconds of animation for a commercial. That just leaves us with the file cards. And the first thing I need to mention is, this guy's real name is Jim Steele. Now that's straight out of an 80s action movie. When you're called Jim Steele, do, do you even need a freaking code name? No sir, you do not. Anyway, Mr. Steele was a biathlon athlete who could have qualified for the Olympic team if he hadn't met Blizzard, yeah, that asshole, who talked him into joining the military. Um, why not do both? 
No, really, the military doesn't mind if their personnel want to compete in the Olympics. Hell, they encourage it. The army has a unit just for that. The US Army World Class Athlete Program was set up specifically to help soldiers fulfill their Olympic dreams. Blizzard probably failed to mention that. The file card goes on to say that Windchill is excellent at spotting hidden obstacles covered in snow while driving at high speeds. Yeah, and all that while driving exposed to the elements. Dude is hardcore! The second file card doesn't add anything new. In fact, it takes things out. There's no mention of Blizzard anymore. Not surprising, considering that character hadn't had a new toy in years. But that's not the main problem I have with the second file card. You know what they did? They changed his freaking name! He went from being Jim Steele, awesome dude, to being Jim McDonald. I mean, why? They took out the one thing that made this guy awesome. That's like if in Knight Rider they take away the car, just leaving you with David Hasselhoff. And nobody wants to be left with just David Hasselhoff. So no, I'm not accepting this. He'll always be Jim Steele to me. Jim Steele, badass. And that was Jim Winchill Steele. A good first toy that the second one couldn't live up to in the slightest, paired with one of the more insane vehicles in the G.I. Joe line. See you next time, everybody. Max Power, he's the man whose name you'd love to touch, but you mustn't touch. His name sounds good in your ear, but when you say it, you mustn't speak.